Hey guys, this is Mark from Oceaholic. Today I'm here with another unboxing review on a Z170 based motherboard. This time we're going to talk about the Asus ROG Maximus 8 Gene motherboard. Um, yeah, let's jump straight into it. Um, this board supports or features Intel's Z170 chipset, um, the latest Intel Core processors, 6th generation codenamed Skylake, then it is SLI and Crossfire ready, the onboard uh, video outputs they support Ultra HD or 4K resolution and the board apparently is Windows 10 ready. Um, yeah, there is a nice little flip cover with this box and first of all we see Asus is talking about their audio solution which they implemented on the, on the little gene. Um, yeah, we can see this is the 2015 edition of their Supreme FX audio, uh, which is actually the, the this this audio solution is based on a, a Realtek ALC 1150 codec, which is being rebranded by Asus into Supreme FX. Then there is an S DAC, which is pretty high end, pretty pretty nice stuff. A dedicated clock generator then high-end Nishikon capacitors, an RC4850 driver unit, a Sonic Sensap amp and a Depop relay. Maybe you notice that when you start your PC and you have speakers connected then you have some kind of like a popping noise coming up and this like relay is there to suppress this popping noise. So Overall, a pretty decent uh, audio implementation. It's also like shielded from the rest of the motherboard with separate trays, like isolated from the other motherboard traces, so there is less uh, interference going on. Um, apart from that, there is um, Intel Ethernet connector, and it received um, Asus LAN guard technology. Basically, that's some additional shielding for less uh, signal interference again. Um, yeah, if we go on, then there is the experience title, and under under this they they hide basically the Keyboard 2 feature. Keyboard allows you to um, program macros on any USB keyboard connected to this motherboard. Uh, with yeah, you can like choose any macros you want, which is really cool. So you don't really have to buy a a very expensive um, keyboard anymore which has macro keys and its own software you can do this all we can do all of this from uh, within the Asus AI suit 3 which is included in the bundle um, apart from that this motherboard also um, supports RAM caching so if you think your SSD is uh, not really fast enough or you still have a, a hard drive and you like want to boost performance a little bit then you dedicate a certain amount of your um, yeah, you dedicate a certain amount of uh, of your memory to. Uh, that's that's really. I'm sorry. That's it's like I, I see there is two times the same, the same text. So that must be a mistake on the on the in, on the box. Okay, interesting. Um, yeah, as I said, RAM cache. You dedicate a certain area of the of the RAM for a RAM disk, and then the the system automatically. Um, stores like the, the most used files in the RAM and you can access the, the, these files much much faster like uh, orders of magnitude faster. Apart from that included in the delivery is also Overwolf which is a cheat protection software but apparently here is the wrong text below. Um, it says rich bundle so the thing comes with uh, quite a bit of software. Uh, there is AI Su3 as I already mentioned, ROG CPU Z, Mem Tweak It, uh, Kaspersky, uh, Daemon tools and Asus web storage. Apart from that there are some protection features like uh, for instance a, a nice little IO shield which is something you really expect. Then there is an overcurrent protection for the, the DRAM slots. Um, there is an additional fuse for the DIMM slots. There are two back plates on the, on the motherboard to provide additional cooling on the power design area and structural reinforcements. And there is an ESD guard, um, yeah, always nice to have. And there is a stainless steel shielding uh, going going on, or stainless steel panel going on on the I/O, on the I/O ports and the backside of the motherboard. Yeah, 
talking about backside, let's flip this box around and have a look at the back of it. And again, we see um, ASUS highlighting the Supreme FX 2015 audio solution. Then we have uh, the USB 3 ports highlighted. As you can see, there is a Type C and there are Type A ports. Then there is Intel Ethernet and again, the keyboard feature. Apart from that, on here, we don't really have a lot I want to talk about just yet at the moment. Uh, there are all the different specs. And for instance, it says that the memory is memory supported up until uh, 3600. So that is what ASUS has pre-tested. But uh, apparently, if you have the, the, the right CPU with a good IMC integrated memory controller and decent memory with really good chips, then it's quite likely that you can hit more than 3,600 megahertz, megahertz already, already now. Okay then, let's um, open this little thing up. Um, as you can see, the Gene is always an M80X motherboard, so it's pretty small. That explains also kind of like the small size of the box itself, but uh, we're not going to talk about uh, the board just yet. First, we have a look at the delivery. And uh, yeah, as always, there is a manual, which we keep close by because I want to show you something later on with it in it. Um, yeah, a door hanger, game on, you shall not pass. And on the other side, game off, you may enter. Funny thing. Then there are stickers to label your SATA cables and stuff. So you always know what data you have on which drive. Makes things a bit easier. Then we go here with some ROG stickers, really cool, really nice. And there is the DVD with all the software. So, and then there are some cables and such. We have SATA cables, uh, four in total, two are um, straight to angled and two are straight straight. Should be enough. There is the IO shield, kept in like a darkish silver tone. Looks really nice once more. Uh, the new CPU installation tool, pretty practical. You put it around the CPU and then you can grip it like a little bit better here from the sides. A screw to attach an M.2 drive. Then there is the Q connector from Asus to plug in all the uh, power reset uh, buttons from the front of your case. Also HDD LED and so on and so forth. Uh, in an easy manner. We have a flexible SLI bridge. Yeah, also nice. And yeah, now let's have a quick look at the manual. Because as I said, this board comes with an M.2 slot. And as we learned from other SAD 170 based motherboards, the M.2 slots, they're usually shared with a SATA, a SATA port. And if you go to the, to the page where you see uh, the specifications, and then the storage part, you can see that um, there is an asterisk behind the, the M.2 part and below there it says when the M.2 socket 3 is operating in SATA mode, SATA port 1 will be disabled. So yeah, that actually means if you plug in an M.2 card or SSD in this case, most likely, then SATA port 1 is going to be disabled. Yeah, that's uh, important to know. So, let's grab the board again, take it out of the box, and yeah, so I do the usual thing, shut up for a few seconds that you can have a look at it yourself. So, enough. Uh, one of the first things you, you may notice if you know the previous generation, uh, the Maxima 7 series motherboards, uh, is that the color scheme has been altered a little bit. So the coolers are not really black anymore. They're more like a dark silver. And they do, I mean the coolers, I mean the heat sinks in this case, they do reflect uh, basically colors of, of if, you, if you choose to go like for instance with a, a blue color, then these, these blocks, they shimmer in like a bluish tone. The same is like for, for green and so on and so forth. Uh, but still the, the writings and, uh, and things, they're kept in, uh, in red, but also the red is going to reflect uh, a little bit. And then as usual with the ROG boards, especially the higher end ones, there are traces and backlight, uh, like around the, 
uh, the sound chip area there are there is one of these traces and then there is a backlight in the in the uh, PCH cooler which uh, where you can choose the, the lighting from the uh, Asus software and you can choose it like any color you basically want so that's gonna make it look really really nice um, yeah let's start with the audio chip here uh, we see the Supreme FX uh, chip, sh basically shield, which covers the ALC 1150 chip. Um, and apart from that, there are the high-end Nishikon capacitors. There is the DPOP relay, and here we have the clock generator. And as I already said, there is a trace going through, basically isolating this part or the sound part of the um, of the PCB from the rest, so there is less uh, signal interference and clearer audio signal for you. Um, quickly about the PCI Express slots, there are two full-sized slots. This one is, a, uh, is X16, it's actually wired with 16 lanes. As, mo as with most of that, 170 volts, the first slot is wired with 16 lanes. Uh, the second one uh, supports four la uh, eight lanes and the third one four lanes. Also, if we flip it to the to the back, then we see that there are 16 lanes, eight lanes, four lanes. And in between the two full-size slots, you have the M.2 slot, which uh, you can where you can install all lengths, all different lengths of uh, M.2. SSDs or you go with a uh, adapter to U2 so that you can uh, attach new NVMe uh, based SSDs which feature a U.2 connector. So apart from that uh, there is a start and a reset button always very nice uh, maybe maybe you know that uh, this little gene board or all the gene boards that have been quite famous in the overclocking scene, so you get like most overclocking features you can possibly get with ACES boards on this board as well, uh, which is like there is a retry button, there is a safe boot button, which always like um, boots the or, or loads the, the standard, the default settings that you always make it into BIOS. Um, we have the ROG extender uh, connectors, and here we have a thermal sensor where you can attach your like probe thingy to have like uh, very accurate temperature readings. Um, here we go with the BIOS chip itself. Then there is a USB 2 connector. Here you can attach uh, all your, your cables coming from the case, like power reset, HD LED, and so on and so forth. Then we have a four pin fan header here. And if we go on, we see the SATA ports. There are two SATA Express ports and two separate SATA ports and in total you have six SATA connectors which support six gigabit and they're all wired to the PCH directly. Um, yeah, here we see the USB 3 front connector. So if you have any USB 3 headers in at your case, you connect them here. Uh, the 24 pin uh, power plug, then another 4 pin fan header, another 4 pin fan header and the mem OK button. If you have any issues with your memory, like the board not booting and the postcode saying that uh, your, your memory is like doing some weird thing, uh, you, you hit this one and let the board work its magic and it will auto fi automatically find settings which, uh, which, uh, which are suitable as long as your memory is actually not dead. Um, yeah, if we go on, we see uh, voltage readout points here. So if you do extreme overclocking, you'll like these thingies here, which will give you accurate readings for memory voltage, CPU voltage, and so on and so forth. Then we see another two four pin fan headers, and here is another four pin header which says W pump, basically water pump. Uh, this one can be adjusted in the BIOS uh, to, to make rotation speeds or to change the rotation speeds of the, of the pump. Um, it's specially optimized for water pumps and not just for fans, so this is really a cool little thing to have. Um, we have the 12 volt 8 pin EPS connector here. And yeah, talking about fan headers, here is the last one. So in total, we have one, two, 
three, four, five, six, seven fan headers on this little board, which is definitely enough. Or basically six fan headers and uh, a dedicated water pump fan header. Um, yeah, so now we're left over with the power design. For the memory, we have two phases, one phase per channel, so one for these two and one for these two. Uh, that's definitely sufficient. It's not like over-engineered, but it's uh, more than enough. Um, and on the CPU, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten phases. And everywhere on the motherboard, there are black metallic caps. I mean, the, the thing is over here and here and here and here and here and everywhere. Uh, they all offer 10k hours lifespan, minimum lifespan. And yeah, overall the, the, the power design is uh, really high quality. It's uh, as usual a digital power supply, uh, power design. And yeah, it's, it's, it's also enough for overclocking. I mean, um, this, this thing can provide like about 600 watts or something at least. Or no, let's say, no, it's about 600 watts if I were to guess, but that's really like, uh, yeah, not, 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 not very accurate guessing. Um, yeah, so again, the coolers are really nicely made. Those are big like chunks of aluminium and they're connected with a flat six millimeter heat pipe. So heat is nicely distributed, nice to have, really, really cool. And yeah, if we have a look at the uh, IO connectors at the back of the board and all the other stuff, we see a clear CMOS button over here. Then a BIOS flash button if you plug in a USB flash drive with the BIOS on it and you plug in like the, the 8 pin power connector and this one. Uh, you can flash the BIOS without having the CPU, the memory, graphics card and so on and so forth installed. So really, really cool stuff. But you have to make sure that the BIOS has the right file name and for that there is a converter on the ASUS website. But it's really not that hard to do. If you uh, go Google it, you'll, you'll easily find some, some uh, manuals which help you around. Okay, if we go on, we have uh, one USB 3.1 Type-C connector. Then we have two, four, six uh, Type-A connectors. We have an HDMI out. We have a display port out. We have a PS2 connector which is also very nice for overclocking because uh, it's quite often the case that those gaming keyboards, they don't always work um, under extreme conditions. And then there is the Intel uh, LAN port, which comes with the additional shielding, that LAN guard technology, which ASUS is implementing. And here we have the analog audio connectors and the digital optical out. So that's been it with the uh, front of the board and the IO connectors. And yeah, if we have a look at the back side of the board, we see again the black matte, matte colored PCB and these uh, reinforcement pa panels that are made from uh, aluminium and they're also equipped with uh, thermal pads underneath them. So they provide some additional cooling for the for the power design and as I said, some structural reinforcement on the PCB itself. So if we bend the board, for example, a little bit, then we see that it bends only like here and here it's really stiff. So, um, yeah, that's basically been it with my unboxing review on the Maximus 8 Gene. Uh, next up, I'll put this one on our test bench and update our chart lists. Don't forget to visit osioholic.ch every once in a while. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching and don't forget to hit the like button, uh, share the video and subscribe. Thanks. Bye bye.